I'm Jamie Taylor. I lead Global Public Health Systems Policy and Partnerships at Johnson & Johnson, part of a new organization that I'll describe momentarily. As many of you may know, Johnson & Johnson is the world's most broadly based healthcare company. We have under our umbrella everything from mouthwash to biologics, and this breadth bids us to constantly think bigger and to think holistically in the way that we approach healthcare challenges, including the challenge of access to medicines. And drawing upon today's theme, our constant challenge at J&J, &J, and I think our unique opportunity, is to figure out how to combine this holistic approach with the practical. How we begin to bring about real solutions, even, way, even where those solutions are complex and multi-layered, in order to, uh, to ameliorate those challenges that have been so aptly described today, and how we take those solutions and bring them to scale. Importantly, in a company like ours, since we manifest our commitment to the pursuit of certain solutions and how we organize internally. And I'm very pleased to, have, to hear that we have an operational expert here. I'm looking forward to the HBR case study on what I'm about to describe. Just a few weeks ago, we announced a major change at Johnson & Johnson. Now at the enterprise level, we have organized and instituted a new global public health organization, a new global public health strategy that combines all of the Johnson & Johnson sectors, medical device, pharmaceutical, and consumer products. And we're building upon a long legacy, of course, in strategic philanthropy, in advocacy, and in R&D. Now, this is significant for a company like ours. We've traditionally been a very decentralized organization. So to connect these pieces together and, and to bid them to act in concert together, channeling that energy toward a specific aim, and the aim of global public health, no less, is something uh, that I hope all of you can appreciate is really a seismic shift within our company. And we've been able to carry out this shift in part because of an increased sense of global urgency. Many of you in the room have brought forward this sense of urgency to us for many years now. We thank you for reminding us that despite significant progress to date, there's much more work to be done. And again, we are organizing accordingly. You've also asked us to think big. And in many discussions with those of you here and those of you not in the room, you've told us that we cannot be satisfied with small scale accomplishments or small scale attempts on the access or innovation fronts. It was Jeff Walker, who's a lecturer at the Kennedy School, who introduced our team to the concept of systems entrepreneurship as we are attempting to build our global public health organization. This is how we are staffing our global public health strategy. For those of you who consider yourselves systems entrepreneurs or leaders, know that we are expanding our team very aggressively in our circles of advisors. Know also that I'm looking for a research fellow to start in Q3 with this kind of mindset. So we, we hope that as, as I share this strategy with you, built on these seven principles, that all of you will see opportunities to shape this strategy, to make it stronger, to help us evolve it, and most importantly, to help us actualize, us, actualize it. Note especially the emphasis on keywords build, breadth, and mobilize. This is a framework inclusive of strategies for improving access to medicines, of course, but where access to medicines may be inhibited because of a missing piece in the continuum of care, whether it be a gap in human capacity, a gap in, say, provider capacity to prescribe, or in the absence of a point of care diagnostic test, for example, this framework compels us to find those gaps, identify them, and make the effort to fill them. And that is our mandate. So the GPH organization is right now aggressively carrying out this, this work to fill gaps in our areas of focus, which are listed here. For those of you who are interested in learning more about the GPH strategic framework, certainly time curtails my ability to go into it in depth, but please visit our new webpage. And, uh, and again, please, please reach out with your insights. We want to make this work, we want to make this better, and we want to reach patients in need. And know that while we absolutely see this GPH organization as a leap forward in the way that we've organized, we, we are fortunate in that we we at Johnson & Johnson are starting from a position of relative strength in our attention to global health and in product accessibility. And these strengths have stemmed in large part from the power of our partnerships, from partnerships with many in this room and special partnerships with Harvard. And I wanted to briefly highlight two very innovative ongoing initiatives that we've launched in recent years in which our partners have pushed us 
and helped us to push the envelope generally toward more creative, more systems-oriented, more multi-layered solutions to healthcare access challenges. You at Harvard have pushed us not only to conjure up new ideas, but you've challenged us to test and implement them. And one of the first initiatives I'll introduce here is that testing and implementation. It's an initiative called Financing and Innovation in Global Health. And where, whereas many of us have talked about financing today, we've, we tend to do so in, in, with a tight focus on the political sphere. And certainly that's important. But we took a page out of the playbook of Andrew Lowe at MIT, and inspired by him, we've recently begun to engage the titans of the financial industry in this discussion. Financial engineers, to bringing them to the table, to tables like this, to work alongside global health advocates, political leaders, academic leaders, and industry to really drive not only a new kind of conversation, but to drive actual financing arrangements and actual deals. So it's practical action in real time. And in fact, the Harvard Global Health Institute was the first organization to sign on to this initiative. Many didn't think that we could do this. But we launched a summit in April of this year, again with this eye to bringing those titans of the financial industry to the table, and it was amazing. It was pleasantly surprising. Over a three-day period, new financial models took shape, and they found ready and immediate applications. We saw checkbooks open and resources flow. You can find more about the event at the website listed here. But there was a boldness to this. And there were, you're thinking about the theme of multi-layered approaches, there was a sub-objective here as well. Leaning back and thinking about a systems-wide view, know that we in the pharmaceutical industry are subject to our own systemic constraints, and some of that has to do with markets and the way that they work, and certainly shareholder pressures, the pressures of institutional investors, and so forth. And what we found is when we make big announcements, like the release, for example, of $200 million toward an Ebola vaccine, or the announce of a new global public health organization, our stock price doesn't necessarily reflect a positive response from markets. And so what we found, or what, what our theory at least is, that we need to bring financial players to the table more aggressively to make them part of this conversation and to help them to get skin in the game. So my hope for this conversation is that next year we'll be bringing the JP Morgans and the Deutsche Banks of the world to participate perhaps under the banner of the Financing and Innovation and Global Health Initiative, which again, we've launched with Harvard. So thank you to, to Harvard Global Health Institute for helping us to launch this. You certainly have a penchant for boldness that we've needed as we've, as we've attempted to take strange bedfellows and make them part of this mix. We also found a similar penchant for boldness at the Harvard Medical School Department of Global Health and Social Medicine, also represented here today. In 2014, as you see here, J&J launched a multi-year, multi-million dollar collaboration with the department with the aim of rethinking the global response to TB. Again, with this systems view, multi-pronged, multi-layered solutions to, with a sub-aim, of course, of improving access to treatment. This was the agenda that we set for the partnership. There's a lot there, obviously, but ambitious as it was, together we made measurable progress against all of these major goals. All of the goals affixed to these focus areas, in, in each of those we saw major, major progress. Much of, much of this, of course, was unveiled last October at the Dubai Center for Healthcare Delivery many, uh, institution many of you are familiar with. So this outlines, I think, multi-layered approaches. It's not either or, it's not cherry picking from the needs within the system, it's and, 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 and J&J &J and Harvard invested together across all of these layers. We looked at system gaps, and perhaps nowhere are those system failures more evident than in pediatric DRTB, which is now an area, area of intensive investment at our company within our GPH organization. We've released very strong statements of commitment on this front. We can no longer stand idly by, as you read here at jnj.com, as children continue to contract and in the worst cases die from this preventable disease. We've proudly supported the Sentinel Project, an effort of HMS, MSF, and others, and we're aggressively driving systems change through this body and through partnerships with PATH and other actors. Again, building layers of partnerships, investing across the board. 
We know that one of the major system gaps in pediatric DRTB in particular is the lack of critical data, the lack of guidelines for treating children with this terrible disease. So working again with HMS, with this department, we've helped to publish a series of policy briefs to fill those gaps and to drive access. Uh, this partnership, you know, it, thinking about additional layers to it, it precipitated the launch of a, a, Advanced Access and Delivery, or AAND. This is a new platform driving improved access to needed treatments in TB through innovation in healthcare delivery and other strategies. We hope it becomes a template for other areas, and we're already seeing it really take flight in that direction. And underneath that, yet another layer, We've now launched with HMS the Zero TB Cities Project, launched last year. We're seeing an increasing number of cities from Lima, Peru, to Chennai, to Durban, and others want this label of Zero TB Cities, and, and they're looking to this multi-layered, systems-oriented roadmap to get them there. So in conjunction with all of these efforts towards Zero TB deaths, our pharmaceutical companies at Johnson & Johnson entered into a multi-year agreement with USAID, to provide Sorturo or Bedaquiline, we heard it mentioned today. This is a medicine for MDR-TB. We're, uh, we're providing $30 million worth of free Bedaquiline to patients in need across 100 countries. Now, to date, we've donated 30,000 courses, six-month courses of the drug as we continue to pursue the collaboration, a collaboration we're very proud of that, again, is one piece and one ambitious piece of a multi-layered solution. This piece alone, the Stop TB Partnership declared a game changer. And we've seen this program inspire similar access efforts among our industry counterparts. But better still, we're seeing patients who had no hope of recovery previously now accessing this important medicine and regaining their health and their lives. And the success of this has pushed us to find missing gaps, further missing gaps, and to fill them. And so beyond this, this work and all that I've mentioned so far, we are now complementing and buttressing these successes through new diagnostic partnerships, new partnerships with Cepheid to improve access to MDR-TB testing, new partnerships with FIND to drive technology investment innovation toward a point of care test that can be distributed around the world. This extensive work with Harvard, with USAID, with PATH, Steffi, you'd find all those I've mentioned to improve access to MDR-TB treatments is an important start. There's still much work to do. We see this as a potentially valuable template and model for other companies to emulate. But still in the broader scheme, we know that there remains much more work to do, especially as we consider the broader mandates of the global goals. Know that we at Johnson & Johnson, through our new global public health organization in particular, are looking forward to working with all of you here to pursue creative and practical and multi-layered actions. You will see those actions expressed in how we partner, in what we implement, and most of all, in how we organize to bring to fruition these higher aims. Thank you.